someone who learned from a young age that achieving success is about we and not me. So I'm very pleased to say in joining the Moncton Wildcats, our new general manager and director of hockey operations, Taylor McDougall. Taylor. Taylor will oversee our scouting department and all hockey operations on and off the ice. Taylor has spent his entire life in hockey. As a player, he spent five seasons in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He then played five seasons on the University of New Brunswick Reds, where he won two national championships, while also completing his undergraduate and law degree, so I guess you're gonna be good in the legal side. <laughs> you're gonna keep us out of trouble, I hope. <laughs> Taylor then played professionally in the East Coast Hockey League as well as in Europe. For the past seven years, Taylor has worked closely with players, and he understands players, as well as their families as an NHL player agent. Taylor has a keen eye for talent, is tensely competitive, I wonder where you get that from, <laughs> and is extremely excited, I know personally, on this great opportunity. Please give me a big Moncton welcome to Taylor McDougall. Hi everyone, I want to thank you all for joining us today and first acknowledge and offer my condolences on the passing of the late, great Mr. Arthur Irving. It's an honor and a privilege to be in front of you today. I want to thank Mr. Irving for having trusted me and providing me the opportunity to work in such a world-class organization. As a proud New Brunswicker, having the chance to work and continue to build upon the Moncton Wildcats' sterling reputation is a thrill of a lifetime. J'ai joué dans le LHGMQ et je suis actif dans le monde du hockey depuis toujours. C'est un immense honneur pour ma famille et, et moi d'avoir l'occasion de revenir dans notre province d'origine et de travailler pour une organisation formidable. Moving forward as general manager in Moncton, I look forward to ingraining ourselves in the community and working collaborative, collaboratively to grow our connection throughout Moncton and this great province. The Moncton Wildcat brand is one that is recognized across North America and it is a great responsibility to uphold and expand upon that brand. Players and people that come to Moncton will continue to recognize the pride that comes in what our crest represents. I look forward to making a significant difference across the community and with every player who calls Moncton home. I recognize, I recognize the expectations are high, but our expectations of ourselves are even higher. We will work together every day in demanding that things are done the right way to the highest standards, the Wildcat way. Our teams will be passionate, hardworking, and relentlessly competitive. I can say this with conviction because I know these traits are apparent and standards are non-negotiable within our new head coach. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the newest head coach of the Moncton Wildcats, Gardner McDougall. I had to check. Uh, 17 hours, 22 minutes. Shortest retirement in hockey history. <laughs> Uh, welcome Moncton, bonjour Moncton. It's uh, how about those Moncton Wildcats? And thank to everyone. I'm going to talk about the strength of the team being the team. And everybody here will be part of our team. Obviously we have uh, players. It's always always about the players. Uh, we have staff. 
Uh, we have loyal and passionate Moncton Wildcat fans, and we're going to be counting all you people to make a difference to help us be the absolute best we want to be. I always talk about best, about being simple. Uh, we certainly know nationwide uh, Mr. Irving's passion for being the best. I simulate it uh, best being better every single time. And every time we get a chance to, we meet, you people meet, we're always going to be trying to get better, and that'll be the standard of our organization moving forward. Uh, to get to this position, things happen quickly <laughs> in the hockey world. And I have extreme gratitude uh, for what Mr. Robert K. Irving has done. I, I can't, I said, there's probably one person in New Brunswick, there's one person in the Quebec Maritime Hockey League, there's one person in all of Canada that could pull it off, what he just did. And uh, he's sitting right here. So let's get a big hand for Mr. Irving. We had a, a few conversations along the way, and uh, he always said it's all about the wow factor. And uh, I said, yeah, life is all about the wow factor. And we're fortunate to be in the hockey world. We've had a lot of wow moments uh, the last few years. And uh, you wake up in the day and you say, wow, that is significant. The uh, first time I got the chance to meet him and he took me through the dressing room and the facilities here, I said, wow, <laughs> unbelievable. And then he went through his vision where he wants to take the Moncton Wildcats. And I was just humbled and I said, wow. And then when he had the opportunity where I could be involved with the staff selection and help him out uh, to choose uh, the next general manager of our hockey club, and Taylor McDougall was the choice, I did a double wow. <laughs> yeah, it's outstanding. So for Mr. Irving, I, I can't thank you enough. And uh, we're uh, enthusiastic, energized to certainly make a difference. I'm fortunate for the last 24 years, at the University of New Brunswick, uh, we had a motto. I've kind of stole it as my own personal motto, is to make a significant difference in everyone that you meet and everything you do. And uh, that'll be my goal going forward, to make a difference, first of all, for Mr. Irving, for the Moncton Wildcats, bigger still, for the city of Moncton and all our Moncton Wildcat fans. I've been really... Yeah. I've been very fortunate to spend 24 years in Fredericton and to make a difference. Last night it was 77 minutes long without any notes. I promise we won't go that far today. Uh, and I did have 39 days in St. John to make a difference there. And we're not going to count days here, but we definitely guarantee that we'll make a difference in each and everybody that's a part of the Moncton Wildcats organization going forward. Uh, just a couple of things before I go. Uh, the city of Moncton has been very significant in my life, and a lot of people wouldn't know that. Uh, in July of the year 2000, I was in the Paw, Manitoba. I took a flight from the Paw, Manitoba to Moncton, New Brunswick. And my sister, Catherine, who's been a longtime resident of, the, of Moncton, picked me up at the airport, and it's great to see her give her a shout out right back there. Excellent. And also great to see a nephew and a former captain of the Moncton Wildcats, Stevie Johnson, give him a hand as well, second time. She picked me up and I was on my way to start my career in Fredericton. I have no idea why I arrived in Moncton, but maybe there was destiny 24 years ago that I'd end up here sometime. I, I drove to Fredericton and I was there 24 years. A significant Moncton, my first AUS victory was against the University of Moncton under Charlie Bourgeois was a coach. We had lost our first two games. In fact, we got pounded seven to one at our second game. And I wonder where is this career gonna go? I watched the warm up for the, the Blue Eagles. I came into my office. I looked at my schedule and I said, I may not win a game in this league. They look like unbelievable. Anyways, we found a way to win. Moncton was significant. That was my first win. My last win, 
in the AUS was a playoff game in late February, early March at the J. Louis Levesque Arena against the Moncton Blue Eagles. They are probably, Derry Cormier sent me a note today. He says, thank God you left. <laughs> so we're looking forward to being part of Moncton. Uh, in 2006, uh, Mr. Irving and the Wildcats hosted the Memorial Cup. And as a young, expiring coach, I knew that Moncton was going to host the national championships the next year. So as a coach with a vision to want to try to win one of those national championships, I bought tickets. I was front row behind the opponents. And I watched every game, twofold. Taylor was 15 years old. He's going to get drafted to the Quebec Major Junior League the next year. So I wanted to get him an idea of what the Major Junior was all about. But more importantly, I want to put my vision to be behind the visitor's bench when Moncton hosted the national championships the next year. I watched all the games. Obviously, it was a heartbreaker at that time for the Wildcats to lose the final. But right now, it's the standard of our organization. And uh, sometimes you've got to get to those finals to figure them out. And Moncton's got to that final. My first three finals, we only won one. The next year in 2007, at the Coliseum, uh, the vision tr uh, proved true. I got to be behind that visitor's bench in the national final. and was one of the greatest national finals of all time. Uh, the Blue Eagles and the Varsity Reds at that time, two New Brunswick teams playing for the national championship. Fortunately, we were one goal better. We hadn't beat them all year. We didn't have the lead all year, but we found a way at the end to be one goal better, and our program's gone certainly significantly since then. But we had great opponents by the Blue Eagles to help us there. You learn things when you're in a national final. As I said, we lost two of our first three. We've been in 10 national or world championship finals since, and we've been fortunate to win nine out of 10. So Mr. Irving, if we can get to the national final, bet on the Wildcats, baby. <laughs> Just in closing, it's always all about family. And uh, we have a, a little Ackerman, I guess, F-O-E, family over everything. It's always your own family. I'm really fortunate to have my wife, Lee, who's been with me uh, many, many years. She's been down a lot of journeys. It hasn't always been a straight road. Uh, she's from Western Canada. I spent 16 years out in Western Canada. I loved every moment of it. And somehow I brought her back for a year to Fredericton. I say, let's just try it for a couple of years. And we've been here 24 years now. We've been finally, I think we can call her a Maritimer, full-fledged Maritimer. Uh, but I can't say enough of what she's done. She's allowed me to pursue my career and uh, way too much time at the arena. We've been fortunate in, uh, to raise two children. Uh, my daughter, Madison, who is a teacher in Fredericton, uh, came to UMB, got three degrees at UMB, and finally figured out what she wanted to do. And uh, I can't be more excited uh, for Taylor, what he's accomplished in his career, and uh, to have the opportunity to work with your son uh, in the best organization in uh, junior hockey in Canada is a uh, miracle, a dream come true. If you asked me a week ago if that was going to happen, I'd say you must be smoking something. But uh, it is reality, and I'm just looking forward uh, to the, the family. It's great to see Kelsey, that's Taylor's wife, and uh, our granddaughter, Lily. Uh, it was one of the different moments when I was called a granddad <laughs> a couple of years ago. Uh, Pat is my uh, father-in-law. It's great to see him as well here. So always family over everything. Shout out, McDougal family. <laughs> Second family is the team. And it's great to see some lads here today. It's always about the team, and it's always about the players. My job is to make a difference in every player's life. I live life as a servant mentality. We try to do whatever we can to help our players excel and be the best they can. Uh, there's not any team in the country that has better resources. I will put together a tremendous staff to help them out and to make a difference in their lives. If we get everyone making a difference, if everyone can just get a little bit better each and every day, we'll have a very, very exciting product for you, the fans, to come and watch, okay? And then the third family is you people. 
We've always looked forward to making a difference in the community. I get some familiar faces there. I know Sean Abbas, are you in the building? He made it there, yeah, Sean Abbas, I know he does a lot of stuff. Uh, Sean Abbas was my trainer uh, back in 1979 at St. Francis Xavier University hockey program. We've been longtime friends since. I put the call out, I said, Sheik, be here tonight. Shout out, Sean Abbas as well. There you go. I look forward uh, to meeting each and every you, every one of you as, as we move forward here. It's an exciting time. There's lots of work to do as we move forward here, but I couldn't be more excited for the opportunity ahead of us. I, I told Mr. Irving it's all about JGS, and Mr. Irving says, how's that JGS work? I said, well, it's very simple. It's just three words that make a difference in your life. I said, the first word starts with J, and it ends with T, and it only has four letters. And he made four choices, he went for O for four. <laughs> I said, the first word is just, and I said the second word in the middle has a G at the front, a G at the end, it has two T's in the middle, and it has eight letters. He says, I'm gonna have to ask my son. <laughs> and I said, we asked the son, he went O for two. So I'm O for six in the Irvings, but you know, it's not about academics here all the time, okay? So just getting, and then I have, yeah, right here, I said, starts with S, it has E-D at the end, what would it be? And what would you say? Started. You got it, okay. Just getting started, I don't know. Yeah, he's got it. Tell me what that means in French. Started? Just getting started. Say it a little louder. I'm gonna to have to learn that, baby. <laughs> here we go. So hey, we are, <laughs> We are just getting started. Thank you for everyone coming, and it's a, a real, it's a lifetime opportunity. I went to UMB 24 years ago. I said that was my NHL. I got a chance to come to the Moncton Wildcats. I tell you what, this is certainly our NHL. So we're really looking forward. JGS, baby, thank you very much. Gardner, I just want to tell you, I don't smoke. <laughs> I had a clear mind all last week. I just like to say, look, this is terrific. I'm thrilled that Gardner and Taylor will be working together to lead the Moncton Wildcats. This is exciting. There is nothing like a father and son working together as a team. I can tell you, my dad has been a mentor in my life and in business. He has provided me with guidance and direction to help me succeed. And I talk to him every night, and he's my inspiration. And I know, Taylor, your dad's your inspiration. And this is a special moment for a father and son together to do great things here in greater Moncton and RJ, Watch out. <laughs> I know this is a unique opportunity for Taylor and Gardner to begin this new era, and I say a new era. Together, they both believe that it takes a team to win. And Gardner, when he was telling, talking to me over and over again, it's the team, okay? And we gotta all be in one, together. And to me, that's what it's all about. If you're going to be successful, you're going to win a championship, we all got to be together. So I'm very excited that we begin this journey today. And it's great to have them both in places as we prepare to host the upcoming Quebec Maritime Junior Hockey League draft in June. And we want to make sure it's a show, put Moncton on the map, which is such a great city. I want to personally welcome you to our organization, and to our great community. I know our fans, and you're out there, aren't you? We got great fans, okay? I know our fans will be excited by the dynamic, fast-paced, competitive, and I can say competitive, and most importantly, a winning style of hockey. And I know our friend here, Gardner, is a very humble person. He doesn't talk about his championships, 
but it speaks for itself. He's a leader, he's a winner, and he's done great things with the players he's had around him. And he would give all the credit to the team, the players. So, Gardner, I know you're great in motivating and especially motivating your players. And I know they're going to be excited to have you as our head coach. And Taylor, I know you've got an eye for talent and putting together the team to allow us to go on to great things and to win a championship. I'm looking forward to working with both of you. So let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Um, I just wondered, Mr. Irving, what were the determining factors for the selection of uh, what Jeff Merrick described this morning as the Moncton McDougals? Nobody knows. <laughs> well, you know, it, it takes great people to lead any organization. And I think, you know, you have to look at the, the background, the track record, the history of both Taylor and for Gardner, and both of them in their own way have been very, very successful. And, you know, Gardner has gone through a lot in the hockey world, and as you can see from his results, his winning, uh, what he's achieved, uh, and it speaks volumes of his as a coach and what he's capable of taking a group of players and taking to the highest heights of winning, okay? It's not easy, you know? We've been in now, in this league, this will be our 28th year, and we've gone through successes and we've gone through failures. And I can tell you, to win a championship, to, to have a team on top, it takes special leadership and it takes a team to win. And I believe both Taylor and Gardner will bring that to the organization, firmly believe in that. So I'm excited to today to make this announcement, to have them lead us in our organization. Uh, just a follow to Taylor. Um, last night, uh, Gardner, during his address, talked about your playing career and that it was the toughest job for a player uh, who is the coach's son is being on, being on the team. But now here you are as a tandem. I just wondered how your own emotions and, and kind of the process went for you and how you're feeling on this day uh, to be beside your dad. Yeah, he didn't know this was coming when he said that, eh? But <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of excitement, and I think um, obviously that's a unique dynamic. But if you, if you look at successful, successful teams, successful organizations, it's all about people being on the same page and, and collaborating and and trying to be the best they can at their roles. And I think that's maximized when people do have a have that trust in one another, and you know that that's obviously apparent in this case. We um, we're in step. But we also are different, so we can challenge each other, which I think is important. But having that, that trust and collaboration, I think, is, will be a key for us. But I also think it's a key for any successful organization. Gardner and uh, Taylor, maybe I'll get each of you, if you could, uh, just talk about the opportunity that, uh, that lies ahead to work together as father-son. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it'll be very exciting. You know, and again, it comes back to, to probably just Having, having equal excitement and equal passion about the process that, that's in front of us. And, and I think we both, uh, we both embrace the process in different ways, but we're both equally passionate about it. And I think that's, I think that's important, because I think when, you're, when the process excites you, I think the results can take care of themselves. So we're really excited with the process, and I'm excited who, not just with, uh, with our head coach, but with our team, with our ownership, with our entire staff. I'm really excited about that, what that process looks like. Good questions. Good to see an Islander here, Jason. Um, and uh, I acknowledge to Kevin Barrett. I said, there's no way he, Kevin Barrett can be in a, a conference without asking a question. And uh, <laughs> I was going to relate Kevin. My first, uh, when I got the job at UNB, uh, I had come down for an interview first, and I didn't get the job the first time. And then the second time, they decided to make a change, which kind of uh, appropriately, the, the coach at UNB at that time decided to go to the Moncton Wildcats. And uh, I didn't get it the second time, but Kevin Barrett kind of gave me the heads up. I think they're looking for a new coach. I phoned the AD at that time, Clint Hamilton. I said, I understand you're looking for a head coach. He said, how do you know that? It's not even out in the media yet. 
So Kevin was part of my first conference in July of 2000, my first conference uh, with the Sea Dogs when I introduced there, he was there. He was at my last conference last night in Fredericton, so he's four for four. He's at the first conference here with the Moncton Wildcats. So shout out Kevin Barrett, excellent job. I don't know if people, uh, and I just read it last night, Kevin's been a long time reporter and he's got the toughest job. At one time, we had four sports reporters in Fredericton alone. We had nine pages of sport. Uh, we had a couple of sports reporters here, numerous uh, sport. Kevin, for the last number of years, has done all three. He's done the Wildcats, the Sea Dogs, and the Reds. An unbelievable job. And I just, I just had read that he's moving on to new pastures. But I think that hopefully there's lots of freelancing for him. And we wish you all the best in your new pursuits. And you've made a difference in the sport industry. So great job, Kevin. <laughs> now going back to your question. Uh, it's just a lifetime moment. Uh, I, I said, to, you know, with Mr. Irving when we first met about wow moments, and this is like the biggest wow moment anyone could ever have. And I've talked to several different coaches uh, throughout the country in different sports. And as one coach said, I just got chills thinking about that. And these are all prominent coaches that had sons active in sport and just the opportunity. But I think it, it goes back to, uh, you know, Mr. Irving, I understand, makes daily calls to different people, and he had mentioned that he makes a daily call to his dad. Uh, when Taylor left home at uh, 16 years old for St. John's Newfoundland, uh, we made daily calls. And if you look at the UMB record from 2007 on, uh, when he joined the St. John uh, Fog Devils at that time, and I learned so much about coaching. I've been a coach for over 35 years, but when you become a dad of a major junior player, you get a different perspective. And I spent uh, two years uh, in an Indian Reserve in Northern Manitoba, Norway House. And one thing I learned, they said, never make a big decision until you put the moccasins of the other person on. And by Taylor playing major junior hockey and then playing five years for me, 10 years of high level hockey and then a year of pro, we'd talk on a daily basis. I got a perspective of, from the player and the player's parents. And it's helped me in immensely my connection and my, uh, how I deal with the players. And it's made, you look at our record from 2007 on at UNB, it was a huge difference. So to be able to have him, where I don't have to call him every day, or he's right next door at the office, uh, we're just so excited for the opportunity. I always say one plus one, if you get the right one plus one, you can make three. We're hoping to make lots of threes. How big of a factor was that, uh, Gardner, in your decision? Well, there's a lot of factors. I think there wasn't just one, but that's certainly the biggest. Uh, I got the two biggest factors on both sides of me. He and he. And uh, he's the greatest salesman, the big, biggest recruiter. There may be the odd free agent we're after. I know when to put the phone to Mr. Irving. Uh, what do they call him? The closer, I believe. Yeah, the closer. So there's no one better in the country than uh, what he's pulled off here. So we're really looking forward to that.